Hi everyone, my name is Norman. I run the blog nimbleneedles.com. Welcome to my living room. Today I want to show you how to read knitting charts. On my blog I have a lot of free patterns and some of them feature charts. One of the questions I get asked the most is well, I don't understand charts. Can you pretty please provide written instructions? So I figured it's about time I shoot a video and answer these questions. Now, there are two things I really would like to say. First, if you haven't been there already, head over to my blog and check out all these free patterns. I'll provide you a link in the description below. And perhaps more to the point, I feel you. The first time I ever saw a knitting chart many, many years ago, I had the total what the F moment. The thing was huge. It covered three pages or so. I still remember it because I wanted to knit a nice lace shawl for my mom. And the thing was full of cryptic symbols where were my knits and pearls and how was I ever to make sense of it? So, in case you feel exactly the same, this video was made for you. Because now, believe it or not, I actually prefer charts. So, let's head over to my desk and show you how to read a knitting chart. In front of me is a very simple knitting chart and I'm going to show you the basics of reading it first and in the next section I will focus on the real tricks of finally understanding a chart. It's not difficult but it does require a different set of mind. So this is a typical knitting chart and in a knitting chart each little box represents one stitch. The box is typically filled with a symbol and the symbol stands for a stitch. And the legend here will tell you which stitch the symbol represents. So here we have a pearl. And then you have numbers. First you have numbers usually going towards the top and these numbers count the rows. So this is the first row and then the second, the third, the fourth, the fifth row and so on. And then you have numbers here at the bottom and usually at the top as well. And these numbers count the stitches. One, two, three, in total 20 stitches. So imagine you already knitted a couple of rows and now you want to know which stitch comes next. Maybe you are on round five and uh, you want to knit the second stitch. So what you have to do is you have to count the rows or simply find the five and then count the stitches one two so this is the second stitch and then you have uh, to look at the legend and it will tell you oh this is a pearl stitch this is very very helpful for spotting mistakes in knitting because the chart is actually a one by one one by one graphic representation of your knitting and you can spot a stitch in exactly the same spot. So here we have a yarn over and you will find it here in the bottom corner as well. So this is really really helpful. You don't have to search for the mistakes in endless rows of written instructions. It's just one look. Great, but how do you actually start knitting a chart? Well, most charts start in the bottom right corner. That's because this is where you usually start knitting as well. After you cast on, you place your very first stitch on the far right of your knitting as well and move or knit all the way towards the left. So 
a chart does exactly the same. It starts here and goes all the way in this direction. I know this is not the way as Westerners read books, but it actually makes a lot of sense and makes the chart actually easier than written instructions because you don't have to think outside the box. You just have to follow the path of your natural knitting. So you start here first row and then you just put your finger on the first little box and look what it tells you to knit blank box means knit stitch so you knit one stitch and once you did that you move your finger to the next little box and it what does it tell you well it tells you a purl stitch so you purl one and then you once you knit that purl stitch you move on to the next box and and so on all the way to the end no matter how big your chart is and how complicated it looks, you actually just have to look at this one line and go through it one box at a time. You can use post-its or, or a ruler or something to mask the rest. The key is really um, breaking it down to manageable steps and not be overwhelmed by um, <laughs> all the complexity of the chart. Once you're done with the very first row, it's time for the second row. And here comes the only, well, maybe a bit difficult part. When you're knitting flat, the second row actually starts at the far end and you need to read it left to right. That's why you will find the numbers counting the return rows on the left side. And suddenly, and this is the difficult part, the symbols mean something else. If you take a quick look at the legend, it will tell you that the dots here mean um, or represent a knit stitch on the wrong side and a purl on the right side. So why is that? Why make it so complicated? Actually, it isn't. And there are two reasons really. First, remember what I told you um, about spotting mistakes. Well, a knitting chart is a graphic representation of the pattern and it helps you to take in the whole design at a glance. But for quite apparent reasons, you can look at your work in progress from one side only. My eyes, my eyes can't look at the back and the front at the same time. That's impossible. And if you ever knitted stocky knit stitch like here, then you probably know that you knit on the right side and you purl on the wrong side. But on the right side, everything will appear just like it's knit stitches. And that's why stock knit stitch uh, looks so smooth. Now, if, if the chart would use different symbols, then a chart for stock knit stitch would look like this. And this actually looks a bit like ribbing. So here's a rib, here's a rib, here's a rib and so on. And you wouldn't actually see, okay, this is one smooth surface of only one stitch. And that's why charts actually show you uh, the same symbols, but they mean something else on the wrong side. And the second reason, 95% of all patterns don't put any difficult stitches into the return round. So usually it's just knits and pearls. And that's quite easy to remember that you have to knit all pearls and purl all knits. And once you understood that, you can knit the second row here, one little box at a time. And when you are done with it, you can turn the project around. So far, so good. Before I go on, I quickly want to remind you to give my video a big thumbs up. Shooting these videos takes a lot of time and effort and a little like or a nice comment is a very easy way to support my work. Now I want to talk to you about different types of knitting charge charts because perhaps your chart doesn't have numbers on both sides. If a pattern is knit in the round, 
then the knitting chart will only show numbers on the right side or maybe there are numbers here but it's the same numbers. And if you think about it, that's actually quite easy to understand because you don't knit the wrong side when you're knitting in the round. You start each round in the exact same spot, just one stitch above the last row. So the chart really shows you that. So be careful and check where the numbers are. So a more complicated chart. Sometimes uh, you only have numbers on the right side, but it's only odd numbers. It always skips one row. What does this mean? Usually this concerns lace and cable patterns. The thing is, when you are advanced enough to knit cables and lace, you will soon notice that most of these patterns just knit every knit stitch the way it appears on the wrong side. So every stitch that looks like a purl stitch will be purled and all the stitches that have the little V will be uh, are a knit stitch and you knit them. So no matter if you did a decrease or a cable or whatnot on the right side, you don't actually need to look at the uh, chart to knit the uh, wrong side. So to save printing space patterns like this one here usually skip the return rows. Often it will say something like knit between the rows or similar at the bottom or the top or wherever in the chart. And sometimes, that's the last thing you might need to know, sometimes the first row starts on the left and this means you actually start the pattern on the wrong side. Now let's talk about the elephant in the room. How do you actually really understand a knitting chart and feel comfortable reading it? I mean, all my explanations so far have been, well, textbook answers. But despite all that, um, a lot of knitters seem to have problems reading them. I often hear, well, there are visual learners, some learn best with spoken word and audio and others prefer text. That may be, but the beauty of a knitting chart is that they're both visual and text. Don't believe me? Let's take a closer look. A lot of people didn't like math in school. It was maybe too complex and too difficult to understand for you. And maybe that's why a lot of knitters um, are so scared of charts. But let me tell you, a mathematical chart is a visual representation of a formula. It can be incredible, useful, but it can also be very complex. A knitting chart, on the other hand, is a line by line representation of knitting stitches of a pattern and you read it like language. It has nothing whatsoever to do with math or formulas. It's just another way to write and you need to learn it like a language. Let me show you. Let's suppose you want to purl one do a yarn over and purl another stitch. You could write it like this, but uh, most people would probably abbreviate it to this purl one, yarn over, purl one. Now handwriting can get sloppy and look a lot like shorthand over time. So after 10 years of writing knitting instructions, your line might actually look like this. And another 10 years later, maybe it looks like this. Now, if we continue this kind of evolution, it maybe looks like this in the end. And now I ask you, where actually is the difference between a chart and your written instructions? A knitting chart is actually just a very condensed and shorthand way of writing and you read it right to left and not left to right. And that is the only difference between a knitting chart and written instructions. And there is actually more. The reason why you understand purl one stands for purl one stitch is because you learned it. But nothing whatsoever in the universe said a purl stitch, like this one here, has to be named Pearl. In German it is called Linke Masche and there's probably a hundred different other names for it. The reason you recognize it 
as a pearl stitch and know what it means is because you learned it. But if you told your non-knitting friends pearl one for me, they might reply, are you trying to hit on me? And it's just like you learn pearl means this very stitch and you have to learn that this little dot here means pearl as well. And you need to learn that. If you spoke Chinese or Japanese, like more than a billion people on this planet do, you probably would already be used to uh, writing and reading symbols. One example, um, we abbreviate stitches like this. But the Japanese would actually abbreviate it like this with this symbol. So the important takeaway is that you need to read a chart just like language. And there's a different reading order, but in Japanese the reading order is top down, uh, right to left. So um, if all these people learned it, I'm really, really sure you can learn it as well. And the only thing you need to remember, just like before, it's not P but a dot, and it's not a comma but a slash, but that's the way uh, the chart is uh, made up and uh, it's just another character. But why not just fill charts with P's and K's instead? Wouldn't that be easier? Well, what makes a lot of these symbols so attractive is the fact that a lot of them actually visualize the way the stitch looks. A yarn over leaves a little hole or for example knit two together, K2 talk. If you know your stitches, then you know knit two together is a right leaning decrease and the symbol in charts is usually a slash. So if you look at it at the chart, you can actually see, okay, something will be leaning towards the right here. So it works a lot like the classic emoji for smile. These characters represent a smile and they look the part. And I'm pretty sure you know by heart that this is a smiley. And um, so if you learned that, I'm 100% sure you can learn knitting um, symbols as well, because essentially that is the same thing. So to sum it up, I really, really want you to get away from treating knitting charts as charts. Rather, treat them as really condensed written instructions in a language you need to learn. I know learning a new language can be hard, but once you did, it will open up a whole new world to you. And the good part, Niddish is a language you don't, you don't need any grammar, you just need to learn a couple of words. It will take time and it may require you to really sit down and study a chart over and over again until you get it. But if you stick to it and practice, it will make your knitting life so much easier. Then you can look at a chart and instantly see how the design looks and know how to knit it. You will never get the same when you look at the line, endless lines of written instructions and it would be quite the pity if you didn't use this important tool to improve your knitting. Anyway, that's it. That's how you read knitting charts. I really, really hope you enjoyed this video. Give me a big thumbs up if you liked it. Comment or write your feedback in case you have any questions. And of course, consider subscribing to my channel if you don't want to miss any new videos. Happy knitting and enjoy the rest of your day!